Hello again. I'm Joe McTurnan, AOPA's Director of Health Policy and Advocacy. I wanted to thank you for joining me for another edition of AOPA's Take. Today, I would like to revisit some of what we discussed last month, but from a slightly different perspective. As you may recall, my last day opus take focused on the proposed lower limb prosthesis LCD revision, which would expand coverage for microprocessor controlled prosthetic knees to certain K2 functional level ambulators. To update you on this, I just participated in the DME MAC public meeting on this subject and provided verbal comments on behalf of AOPA. All of the comments that were offered, including AOPA's, were in favor of the proposed expansion and expressed general gratitude to the DME Max for recognizing the importance of making this technology available to those that may benefit from it the most. As I was participating in the meeting, though, it made me realize what a different place the OMP profession is from an acceptance of technology standpoint than it was not so very long ago. Until recently, the general consensus was that investment in research and development of new O&P technologies were made with a certain level of risk, as payers were hesitant to recognize the value of these investments through coding, coverage, and compensation. I call these the three C's. I believe they make up the keys to success for new products in the O&P market. As speakers at today's meeting were offering comments on the proposed expansion of microprocessor knee coverage to certain K2 ambulators, I realized that this is only one example of the clear shift in acceptance of technology that has recently occurred. In the last year, we have seen new codes and suggested reimbursement levels released for things like powered exoskeletons, powered upper extremity orthoses, and adjustable prosthetic sockets. All of these represent technological advancements that in the past have faced challenges gaining traction, whether it be through hurdles in coding, coverage, compensation, or sometimes all three. In addition, the DME Max have recently released a correct coding bulletin that provided clarification regarding 3D printed orthoses and that they could now be considered custom fabricated as long as they meet the requirements of Appendix C of the DEMIPO's quality standards. This clarification addressed long-standing questions regarding the proper use of 3D printing technology within the o &P space. While some questions remain about 3D printed prostheses and prosthetic components, the correct coding bulletin has established precedent to continue to develop this important technology. All of these developments appear to be part of a new willingness by the DME Max and CMS to recognize and support technological advancements within ONP and creates renewed optimism, supporting continued investment within the profession. It is a far cry from where we were just a few years ago, and it represents exciting times. Thanks for spending just a few minutes with me today. And as always, AOPA's take, where you go when you need to know.